Howdy, partner. I, like many of you, are totally stoked for the return of Westworld this week. To celebrate, I'm going to talk about some myths about the Wild West and finish off by talking about why we have myths about the Wild West. Hashtag not sponsored. Hi, I'm Tristan Johnson and this is Step Back History. Be sure to click the subscribe button as well as the bell notification to never miss a new Step Back video or live stream. We have a romantic vision of what life was like in the untamed Wild West. We carry an image of independent men and women, but mostly men, wearing fancy cowboy hats and smoking Marlboro cigarettes while taming uninhabited territory reliant on no one but themselves. I think we can begin with the stuff you should know as a history student, then get to the fun stuff. The Wild West has pretty much always been a fiction. Our image comes from old Western films that have their origins in early 20th century Wild West shows of rodeo acts, cowboy and Indian fights, and dramatic tales of great bank heists and violent chaos. I think Westworld having this idea of the Wild West while being a simulation, a performance, is quite a clever choice on behalf of, well, Michael Crichton when he thought of the much cornier movie in the 70s. Even though near the end of his life he got a little crazy and started becoming a climate change denier. Anyway, I think viewers of this channel will know the region of the Wild West was far from uninhabited. People had been settling there off and on for thousands of years. Even before the first British settlers arrived in Plymouth, Spanish cowboys called Baqueros lived in the region. Eventually, those Spaniards became Mexican, and when America decided it wanted the West, the Americans took this territory for themselves. This didn't mean the Mexicans living there just up and left, so the white settlers arrived to an already active community of indigenous peoples and settlers, including many runaway slaves from the US seeking refuge in Mexico, which had banned slavery. By the way, baqueros is apparently the word white people turned into buckaroos, which might be the whitest thing I ever heard. Because this region is pretty arid, farming is difficult. Ranching became more popular, but only because of critical inventions in the late 19th century. Those independent, self-reliant men relied heavily on inventions like the growing use of refrigeration and the close-by rail network to sell all that cow to hungry people on the East Coast. Also, that self-reliance tends to write out all the women and children who came with those men and made their lives function. Now, let's see if I can bust a few myths for you. The clashes between indigenous peoples and ordinary settlers weren't frequent. Most of those conflicts were the US cavalry invading indigenous peoples' territory for having the audacity of living where white people want to. They either forced the indigenous people off their land or were bloody suppressions of rebellion. When it came to attacking ordinary settlers on wagons, on the other hand, not so much. Evidence says only a few hundred people died this way ever. Considering they were on the battlefield of a genocidal war, that's downright peaceful. We have a lot of Western stories about bank robberies, but they weren't common. Banks were well defended and in the center of town close to the sheriff with no real back door. All in all about eight recorded real bank heists in the whole Wild West occurred. On an adjacent note, you probably think of the West as a place where everyone had guns, but many of these towns outright banned them. Rapid fire time, the cowboy hat is a modern invention. The real cowboy hat looks more like this, or this, or this. The six shooter was super unreliable and dangerous. It shot a tiny bullet with a limited range and would burn your hand when fired. It was a last resort at best. They much preferred shotguns and rifles. That reminds me, I should make a video about guns as a technology historian. Anyway, the California Gold Rush was one of many and not near the first. The famous gunfight at the OK Corral lasted about a minute tops and took place behind the OK Corral. There's some cool stuff in the West that we don't give much attention though. There were feral camels in Texas, which is pretty fun. There was a civil war battle in New Mexico where the Confederates tried to follow the Rio Grande and take Colorado before Union soldiers defeated them with local help. You know, losing as the Confederacy always does. The oldest settlement in the United States today is in New Mexico. It's called the Acoma Pueblo. 
People have been living on that spot since the 12th century. Now, talking about the myths of the Wild West isn't uncommon. Several people have done it before, but what I don't find is people asking why. Why did the US build so much mythology around this 40-ish year period in the middle of nowhere? It's because of a powerful myth in American culture known as the frontier. The frontier myth is one that has been prevalent in America from the colonial days. It's built upon myths Europeans made about the New World, that there was this vast empty area where anyone could make themselves. This myth was dominant and drove a lot of people to expand out west into indigenous territory. One of the most important American historians, Richard Slotkin, outlined this myth, stating many Americans believed in these untamed empty spaces where the self-reliant, individualistic man could rise to the top. This myth was first made significant in 1893 back when history was first formalizing as a profession. Back then, historians were definitely part of the nationalism movements going on, and often histories were long, arduous narratives of a country's past in order to build nation. It's a sort of original sin the field has been desperately trying to think our way out of over the past hundred years and change. Anyway, in 1893, Frederick Jackson Turner wrote an essay called The Significance of the Frontier in American History. He claimed that what made American character was the, quote, meeting point between savagery and civilization. Charming. Turner believed that there were waves of colonization, but there was always an edge called the frontier. He argued that interaction with indigenous peoples influenced these pioneers and they became rugged individuals who loved freedom and individualism. He claimed the frontier was why Americans loved nationalism and democracy. He didn't invent this idea, but he formalized and gave it a voice and a name. In the early 20th century, this idea got a lot of popularity. Americans idealized the frontier. America wasn't the great cities of New York or Boston, but the rural real America. Richard Slotkin, a way better historian than Turner, has dedicated a good chunk of his career to deconstructing this prevalent myth. He traced it all the way to people in Europe making myths about the New World as a place where their rigid social structure and limited land boxed them in. It evolved over American history and built not only the story of the land of opportunity, but a story with more sinister aspects. This myth also made America a place where the strong could conquer, the weak deserve their fates, and might makes right. This myth was so powerful and motivated so many people that it drove the constant expansion of the American borders at the expense of the people who lived there. If you want to read any of Slotkin's trilogy of books in this subject, I will put links in the description and I get a bit of a kickback if you make any purchase using the link. Stories are important, and the stories we tell ourselves about how we got to here not only change the way we see our past, but our present and directions for the future. The idealized Wild West is the last vestige of hanging on to the idea of America as a place where anyone can make it. It just leaves out that it isn't based on reality. What do you think this myth is going to do to culture today? Are you free Sunday nights? I do a show those nights with Emperor Tigerstar and Cody from the Alternate History Hub. Come see it live Sundays at 8 Eastern on the Alternate History Hub channel. This video was made possible by these sheriff's deputies, as well as the rest of my patrons over at Patreon. I'd especially like to thank Don and Carrie Johnson, as well as Colbyn Mani for their generosity. The theme song is by 12 Tone, and come back next time for more Step Back. Mm -hmm.